Hey there, CPO here, and uh, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of what I've learned about airspace, um, specifically in the area that I live, in the uh, Washington, Baltimore uh, metropolitan area, because the airspace is quite congested. Um, so uh, as a new student pilot, I've been spending a lot of time trying to understand airspace completely so that if somebody... Uh, were to you know check my understanding, let's say it's a knowledge practical test um, or uh, or a written test for that matter, and uh, provided me any location on a sectional and an altitude, I should know without a doubt what airspace I'm in. And so I've been doing a lot of studying on that particular part. And there were some things that were confusing me as a new guy. And now that I get it, right, there was a point where finally it clicked. Once I got it, now I can go back and look at all those other videos and uh, 2D graphics that before were kind of leaving me a little bit confused, and now they make perfect sense. So um, what I decided to do was take the knowledge that I've gained and apply it in a 3D model. And I kind of mocked up a 3D model here, and I'm not a 3D modeler, so uh, that in and of itself was a feat for me. Um, but I thought I would show you um, what I came up with, what I'm mostly expecting to uh, to really cover here is class G and class E airspace. Uh, that was the most confusing part for me. Actually, class G was the most confusing, and it sounds strange, but, um, but I have to understand class E to know where class G is. And of course, uh, B, C, and D are all fairly uh, self-explanatory, and then um, class A is fairly self-explanatory. So um, it was Class G that was confusing me, and probably because all the videos, and I've watched the ground school videos from Sporties and Kings and a lot of other videos online. I've looked at a lot of pictures and graphics online, and probably the thing that confused me the most was the concept of Class G, right? You, I'm in the East Coast, and you hear people say, yeah, you, you won't find any just any Class G in the East Coast. And I was getting confused, right, because I'm like, okay, well, what what's under Class – you know, I – it took me a little while to get it to grasp. And I think the clarification statement is when people say that, what they mean is there's no unobstructed class G uh, in the in the eastern United States. And what I mean by that is where class G runs um, from the ground all the way up to its maximum. There's very few places and maybe none in the eastern part of the United States that have unobstructed class G. So that was kind of confusing me. Um, but anyway, so... Let me show you what I mocked up here for the Washington metro area. I'll qualify this by saying, number one, this isn't a complete representation of all the airspace in this area. Uh, I would be here for weeks trying to map all this out. I just, I felt like I got enough to understand what I was doing and uh, hopefully enough uh, to share with you. Uh, maybe some of you that are having a hard time clicking with this um, will uh, will get it. And then, uh, you know, this isn't uh, to try and explain where the uh, special flight rules area is or the flight restricted zone uh, or anything like that. So remember, I'm the new guy here. So uh, but I think I think it might be valuable for uh, a 3D representation, a 3D model, of the airspace for people that are having a hard time understanding it. All right. So here's a sectional I'm working on. Uh, this is uh, just a, a part of the uh, Washington uh, sectional. This is my uh, home airport right here, Tipton FME. And as you can see, we're nestled uh, right under and between Class B airspace from PWI and uh, Reagan. And uh, then there's also uh, Dulles over here. So I'm not trying to cover all this Class B. Uh, there's a lot of it here. As a matter of fact, when I modeled this up, I only modeled the surface, the 1500 floor and the 2500 floor. Just know that it goes out uh, 3,500 and 4,500 floor uh, for this Class B area. So it's a little bit more extensive than I, I mocked up. Uh, I did mock up the flight restricted zone. Uh, I did not show the boundary of the special flight rules area. Um, so that's there. Um, and, the, and the flight restricted zone isn't airspace. It just happens to be, it's actually Class B airspace that happens to be restricted. So when I talk about it as an entity, that doesn't mean it's an airspace. It's just, uh, it's important to know um, how you're, for navigation, right? That you got to stay out of that, just like you might have to stay out of certain types of airspace under certain conditions. And uh, then I have a couple airports over here. Um, I've got Ridgely and I've got uh, Easton. So Easton is a towered airport with a class D uh, to the floor. 
that uh, rises up to uh, top of 2600. So I'm going to represent that. These are class E's um, with a floor of 700 inside here. And then inside here is class E's with a floor of 700. And that's because of this magenta sort of uh, fuzzy side. Uh, on the sharp side of the uh, magenta is class E with a floor of 1200. These are uh, AGL values, by the way. Um, and then we've got this line here, this section, which this side of that is a floor of 700 AGL. This side is a floor of 1200 AGL. So lots going on here. Um, I excluded a couple of these other airports. I excluded all this because uh, I didn't want to mess with it. Like I said, I didn't go through the trouble of breaking out the 3,500 and 4,500 uh, foot floors. Uh, there is some restricted um, areas here, but I did include those. So again, this isn't designed to uh, show you how to fly here. It's just to bring a concept home. So uh, with that said, if we rotate this, we can take a look at the airspace and how it basically uh, envelopes uh, the sky, right? So, um, and it's like those Russian dolls, right? There's airspace inside of airspace. So the white here is class A, that's at 18,000 MSL, mean sea level. And then all this magenta pinky stuff is class E, and there are varying levels of class E, and that's uh, I'll show you that here. Uh, you've got your blue here, which is a class D over Easton I showed you, goes to the ground. You've got your class B here uh, over uh, BWI, class B here over Washington. Um, and then you've got the uh, FRZ here in red. And then you can see here, um, we can peek inside of this and see how the class B sort of expands inside the class E. So before we go inside, all of this empty space down here in the bottom, everything that doesn't have uh, pink or blue or red, that is class G. So, and class G is from the ground. That's how I like to think of class G. I know other people have other ways of doing it, but it's at the ground. It's like a coat of primer uh, on the globe, right? There's just a little layer of class G all over the place, except for these places where other airspace goes all the way to the ground. And uh, in this case, it's ground level to 700 feet AGL, right, inside here. And then you've got this line here I showed you on the sectional uh, where it changes to 1,200 feet AGL. And then over these airports, like I showed you on the sectional, and you can kind of see them here, um, you've got the fuzzy side of the magenta, which brings it back down to 700 AGL for the airports. And then you've got this class D, which sends it all the way to ground level. So um, pretty much everything inside here, if you're under 700 feet here, you're in class G. Matter of fact, here's my, uh, my airport right here, Tipton. So we come out of Tipton here, and uh, they've been nice enough to cut out a little class B for us um, at, uh, at BWI. And then we've got the flight restricted zone here flanking us, as well as a bunch of class B uh, up here that we've got to navigate through. When we leave the ground, we're in uncontrolled airspace uh, below 700 feet AGL. This is class G. And then as we are departing and we get up past the 700 feet, we enter into class E. And then, of course, we're uh, staying out generally of the Class Bs, but um, you can see how the Class B starts to overlap. We've got like this tunnel uh, of Class E here that we can go through without hitting any of the Class Bs or the, uh, the FRZ. So anyway, that's how that looks. Let me pull some layers off just to make this easy. Let me get rid of Class A, and I'll get rid of the upper level of the Class E. All right, so when I hide this top chart, you can see the airspace uh, underneath it. So the FRZ goes all the way up to, uh, to class A, and so does the class E. So we're kind of looking in here. You can see where the shelf is here. Again, um, on the sectional, 
that is denoted by that line that I showed you uh, right here, this line. So that is the barrier between 1200 AGL floor and 700 AGL floor. You've got this class D that runs from the ground, little tube up through the class E. And then uh, you've got these other little uh, protrusions of class E here. Uh, let's get rid of this so we can get a better look at this class B. Uh, again, I'm not modeled the whole class B, but up just to a certain level here. Uh, but there's several other shelves here. And uh, if you're below 700, you're in class G. Above 700, you hit class E. And then you start hitting the different layers of class B as you go higher and higher. Um, they get further and further out. So that's really it. Just wanted to kind of model this up um, and uh, hope it was helpful for somebody. Uh, it certainly helped me to look at it this way. Again, in particular, I was really like, okay, I'm at, I don't know, 800 feet uh, elevation um, right here. Uh, what airspace am I at? Well, at 800 AGL uh, in this particular sectional, I'm in class E because I'm below the floor for class B and I'm above the floor of the class E. And then looking at it like right here, I come across here and I, I, I cross this line here right past Kent Island. I go, let's say I'm at you know, 800 feet above ground level. I'm in class E. And then when I hit this, I'm in class G again because that shelf changes, as you can see here. Um, I've got more room. So anyway, uh, if you've been confused about where class G is underneath all of this uh, and, and maybe how class E looks, uh, hopefully this was helpful for you. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.